What's going on everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now and today we're coming to you from the Apache Trail. So we're going to start out here in Apache Junction. We're going to go past Canyon Lake and then we're going to go up into Tortilla Flat. And we'll stop here at the Superstition Mountain Museum, do some exploring around here, see what it was like back in the old mining days at the turn of the century the 18th and 19th century and after that museum we're headed here to goldfield now goldfield is definitely a place that will take you back in time this is very much like what life was like back in the uh, 1800s for the pioneers even at the uh, 1900s like i said uh, so it wasn't too long ago maybe a hundred years ago this is what life was like out here as a miner and what they were looking for was mostly gold Things to do at Goldfield, they have a ride, a zip line, and checking out some of the old saloon style buildings. And then you head up towards Canyon Lake. Now once you get to Canyon Lake, it's a very beautiful looking lake. You can actually go out on that lake, rent a boat if you head all the way towards the marina. Uh, that's something fun to do in May or maybe even September or October. Uh, really good weather. If you go out in the summertime, it can get quite hot. But if you're getting in the water, that's a great way to cool off. Canyon Lake is one of those places. And it goes right through the Superstition Mountains. And the reason they call it Apache Trail is because they would encounter a lot of Apache Native Americans who were living out here. And when you're out in this kind of territory, you're gonna really feel like you're in the great wide open. It's been preserved as part of the Tonto National Forest. And it's really interesting. Now here we've arrived at Tortilla Flat. This is the end of the pavement, basically right around Tortilla Flat. And then it turns to dirt road, as you will see a little bit later on. Also, Tortilla Flat tells a story of Jacob Walsh. He's the Lost Dutchman. So when you're out in the superstitions, you may see things about the Lost Dutchman's gold mine. They say he buried his treasure somewhere in those mountains. And the reason they're called Superstition Mountains is because it's a eerie place and it has an eerie reputation kind of similar to what you've seen in places like the Bermuda Triangle. Native Americans used to love living out here. There's a few areas in Arizona called the Apache Strongholds. This area right here is one of the Apache Strongholds, hence why they got the name and then also the Apache Lake which is up above Canyon. So lots of names associated with Apaches. Some of you may have already heard about Geronimo and Cochise. Now, an Apache stronghold is an area where Apache Indians come together and they basically form a strong militia to fight off the invaders. In this case, the foreigners were coming from the east and they were coming on stagecoach and they were trespassing into Apache land. And this ultimately led to uh, Apaches scalping, boxing in, that's where you get Box Canyon because in the Box Canyon is a tight and narrow canyon where you can get boxed in if you're ever ambushed by Apache uh, Indians. That's what it was like to be a settler or a pioneer back in the Arizona days, is there was locals who were the natives and they were experiencing intruders. And the intruders were basically looking to settle new areas across the country, so it was a conflict for both uh, parties. But as you can see, it's extremely beautiful out here. Just, just imagine how rugged it had to be for people in a stagecoach, uh, on a wood stagecoach at that. No air conditioning going through here where it's a very brutal climate. It took some real pioneers to get out here. And like I said, many of them were up along the Salt River Canyon area and they were looking for precious metals, silver, gold, and then eventually Arizona obviously became the copper state. For around four to five years, the Apache Trail was actually closed past a certain point. You could not get from Canyon Lake to Apache Lake because there was a big storm and it created some erosion out here. But people actually do some of the off-roading in Jeeps where they will go around these Jeep trails. Uh, if you do that, make sure you have the proper vehicle for that because you will need 4x4 guaranteed and also risk popping a tire, stuff like that. Like I said, it's very rugged out here. Your cell phone might not even work. So I would say many of you should not go out on those Jeep trails, but I know some of you will because you have the vehicle for it. And now as we wind through the superstitions, the area where the road was actually closed for a few years, we're now approaching Apache Lake. But let me give you some more history on the Apache Indians. So they were not considered 
indigenous to Arizona. They might have been native to the Americas, but they were not indigenous. They were supposed to have come down from Canada around the 1300s, and they were actually at war with the local tribe, the Comanches, and there was even some other tribes like the Navajo and the Hopi in northeastern Arizona. But the Apaches came around the 1300s. Remember, for a long time, the Ho'okam people were out here in the Phoenix area. In fact, something that you may not know is that the first child of European ancestry was born in Arizona in 1875 down in Phoenix. That just gives you an idea of how new Phoenix is in the timeline of history with the way it is in the modern world. So they lived here a lot longer than we have been here in Phoenix as Americans, right? So next thing I want to show you guys is the camping trails out here, uh, the campgrounds along the lake. Uh, there's a beautiful dam up ahead here. This is the Roosevelt Lake Dam that we're headed towards, and that will be around Roosevelt and that whole area. And we'll continue to talk about the Native Americans because there was a big history that needs to be told. And something to know about Fort McDowell, that was the fort that was built because the Apaches were raiders. They would raid and pillage uh, establishments and new villages because that's just how they worked. That's what they did. They were uh, a tribe of people who were very warrior. They were a warrior tribe. Uh, not all the tribes were warriors. They were kind of bullies to like the Comanche and some of the local tribes in the area that were here before them. Um, but that's what the Apaches did and that's, what, that's why they set up Fort McDowell. And Fort McDowell was not an American military force. It was a bunch of local militiamen who would actually hold down Fort McDowell and make it a more tolerable place for new settlers. But as you can see, they've got plenty of different areas like the Burnt Corral campground here. We just showed you around there. There is a recreation fee for some of this stuff and make sure you always pay it at the machine or at the booth. But from here, we will head up to Roosevelt Lake. Now, something I wanna tell you guys about this whole lake system that you've seen here. You've got Saguaro Lake, you've got Canyon Lake, Apache Lake, and Roosevelt at the top. This is all part of the CAP, which is the Central Arizona Project. This is where Phoenix gets around 37% of its water supply for tap water and other needs. Now let's talk a bit more about the Apaches. Historians have said that there was two different eras of Apaches and local tribes, and they called it the Ranchero uh, era and that was before 1871. After 1871, it was the era of the Renegade. And a lot of that changes around Camp Grant. Camp Grant was where there was a massacre against Apache Renegades who were massacred there. And that is around the area of San Carlos. So anyway, let's keep this tour going. And one of the things you'll notice about Roosevelt here is this is a very large lake thanks in part to this large dam. So this is the very first lake of the Salt River uh, CAP project. Above Lake Roosevelt, it's very rugged up there, even more so than the Apache Trail. So what you're looking at here is some very expansive Arizona desert. Really beautiful up here. It's very unique. Not many places like this in the world. And some quick facts about Roosevelt Lake here. It is the largest lake in Arizona located in the Tonto National Forest here in central Arizona. At full capacity, the lake is about 22 miles long. Uh, that's nearly 128 miles of shoreline. Wouldn't it be nice to have some uh, lakefront property? There's a bit of a water shortage as of late uh, because the lake can store around 1,653 acre feet of water at maximum uh, lake size. The area is currently used as a recreation area. You'll see people out there with boats, especially in the summertime, uh, also jet skis, and they have a nice marina. They have camping here. This is a really cool place. It does take some time to get out here, but if you're going to take the Apache Trail, you can stay out there by Apache Lake and camp, or you can camp up here at Roosevelt Lake, and then you can drive back home along the route that goes through Globe, Miami, Superior, and back into the valley. Now, once you're out here, you can actually go up to the Tonto National Monument. It is a bit of a hike. You should probably get a guide if you want to go up there, but it is a cliff dwelling where some of the 
indigenous, where some of the Native Americans were living at the time. But yeah, now we're out here on Route 188. Uh, once you get to that dam, you can either go to the left or go to the right, uh, because right in front of you is going to be the lake. But if you took 188, you'd be going up there towards Payson. If you took 188 going towards the other direction, that's towards Globe, Miami, and that'll take you more into uh, San Carlos area, which we kind of talked about. Now, if you wanted more history about the Native Americans, research Apache Stronghold on uh, YouTube, and you can watch the Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains uh, YouTube channel. They've got a lot of information over there. For those of you who might be interested in exploring more about this beautiful mountain range, uh, more than just a uh, flat iron mountain, there's a lot going on in that wilderness there. And there's a lot going on all across Arizona, and I'd encourage you guys to continue to explore as we continue to show you around. If you guys really love videos like this, you should subscribe to this channel because we're going to be showing you more places like this as we continue to dive deeper into Arizona's uh, wild blue yonder because there's places like Aravipa, there's places like Mount Graham, there's places like the Chiricahuas, northeastern Arizona for those of you who saw our recent uh, Monument Valley video that we did. We've been making lots of videos like this, but we really love exploring Arizona. And you can see right here, this is a beautiful place in Arizona to explore. In fact, if you go down through Globe and Miami, lots of history in that downtown area. And then if you go down south of here towards Phoenix, there's Superior. Superior also has a biosphere area, like a recreational area, a botanical garden kind of thing. They call it an arboretum. And that's got some history about the Apaches. So it was a really unique history just 150 years ago uh, in the old Wild West that you'd want to learn about. In our last video, we went to Southern Arizona and we showed you all those towns and villages around the area of Tucson. Another cool history to discover, especially as you're down around Patagonia and the Dayonza Trail. So Arizona really has a lot of history to explore. Hope you guys can get out there and do some exploring this winter even into the spring. We'll see you on the next one. You can watch our Monument Valley video next or the Southern Arizona video that we just made by clicking one of these end screens. And thank you to all of our subscribers who make these videos possible.